everyone, welcome to the second season of the Classic Podcast Admitted series. As a recap, on Admitted, we invite Townsend Harris seniors to read and discuss the personal essays that got them admitted into their dream colleges. We're your hosts, Jasmine. And Jana. Today we're going to listen to how planting a fig tree got Dionisi into his dream school. Hi Dionisi, and thank you so much for coming on to the show. Hey guys, I'm Dionisi. I'm a senior. I applied to Boston College with Early Decision 1, with my intended major being psychology, and I'm on the pre-med track. Welcome. So you answered prompt number five on the Common App, which asks, discuss an accomplishment, event, or realization that sparked a period of personal growth and a new understanding of yourself and others. Go on right ahead. So there I am again, sitting on the couch, looking up at a blank ceiling. I thought the days off from school would be fun, but this is killing me. I glance over at my grandfather sitting next to me. His eyes are devoid of life, blankly staring at the TV. His face looks frozen in time. The same thought that has appeared in my head a hundred times a day appears again. I want to do something, anything. Let's plant sikya, fig tree, my grandpa suddenly says with a rare hint of excitement in his voice. Intrigued, I dash to my front yard to collect a graft for the new fig tree, a twig from the old to grow something new. I never noticed the beauty of our old fig tree in the front yard. It was imported as a seed from Greece 24 years before and now has enveloped the entrance of, to our house. Its branches and leaves mimic hundreds of arms wrapping around my home and family, creating a warm and quiet world in the heart of bustling New York City. I never noticed the birds and the insects I call the fig tree home. It has created its own ecosystem ambience right in my front yard. My whole life the fig tree had been there, taken for granted that it would grow figs every summer and be a nuisance to take care of in the winter. Only when I need to take from it to grow something new do I finally appreciate its beauty and grandeur. I thought this would be a lot easier. My grandfather ignores my complaint, and we both struggle with the dirt and heat as we pot the plant and carry it down the stairs, back to the yard. My grandfather goes back to the TV, and there I am again, sitting on the couch, staring at the ceiling, but I still feel my heart racing. I glance over at my grandfather at his shriveled body and permanently lined face and feel the shift in my chest as my heart grows just a little bit bigger. This man had come to America as an undocumented immigrant without shoes or money and sacrificed his life for the future generations for me to be able to sit on this couch board. I lean on my windowsill and stare at the small patch of potted dirt. Shame washes over me. I think of my father working at a construction site alongside my grandfather at just 12 years old, and my mother prioritizing her elderly parents and children over her career. And I think of myself taking but never giving much back in return. Days later, I spot a singular leaf growing from the planted graft and my heart again soars, because finally I see myself growing as well. I can begin to understand that I too have a purpose. I will pay back my family for their sacrifices whenever I can. I have to give back what I can. But I also have to pay it forward. I acknowledge the imbalance of our world. We, I, take what we want, when we want, without regard to the toll of our selfishness takes on those in other parts of the globe and the natural world itself. While I don't know yet the, the specifics of how, I do know that I will strive to become a man of integrity, one is committed to justice and in service to others, so we could all live in a world where the location of birth does not predetermine our fate. It's time I start sacrificing too, but not just for those who live in my house, but for all those who live in our home. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, okay, so now we're gonna go into the question and answer uh, portion. Um, so you did a fantastic job interweaving the symbolism of the fig tree with your own familial history and relationships. You. Um, you took this moment that you shared with your grandfather and committed it to a very reflective piece of both gratitude and inspired aspiration. So how did you know you wanted your family to be at the crux of your essay? You chose your grandfather to be the centerpiece of your realization. Could you talk more about your relationship with him and why you highlighted that throughout your essay? So I'm very close with my family. Um, they're always like a big aspect in my life. When I was looking, uh, brainstorming for uh, an idea and um, anything I was trying to do it was always involved in my family and I try to find like a piece of me a character trait that was like something I want to highlight for my essay it, it turned out to be somewhat related to my family and like specifically for my grandfather like he lives with me me my grandmother and my grandfather live in the same home with me and they're like second parents to me basically I see them every day I see them every night and I'm with them all the time and especially during quarantine uh, we were stuck in the house, so I got to actually finally appreciate, you know, their presence and spend time with them, talk and like share stories. So he was, he's a big part of my life. And I know 
you know, for your essay, you want to highlight who you are. And it's a lot easier when you're actually, when you're being real about it and like when you're talking about people that are really important to you. Did you know from the start that your family was what you wanted to focus on or did you have any different ideas? What was the brainstorming process like for you? So the brainstorming <laughs> process for me was, uh, it was a bit difficult. I don't recommend what I did. I start in the summer, start before the summer, get help from your teachers and stuff. I kind of started in October, which is a very <laughs> bad thing to do. And an issue with it was that I wrote two essays before mine, like, you know, edited, made them full essays. And I just didn't like them. So I just like at first, you know, I gathered all these ideas about myself. I found all these stories and I didn't try, you know, tried them out and stuff. So like keep an open mind because like that's what allowed me to finally get to my final essay because I saw this one. I didn't, I didn't like it. So I moved on You know, I kept on like looking for different things to write about different stories. And I eventually, you know, thought about the, me planting the fig tree and how that could be related to my family and my current situation. I'm not condoning procrastinating. Don't get me wrong. I procrastinate a lot too. I procrastinate on my essay. Um, but I feel like sometimes you can be very hyper efficient and kind of it compels you to be very sure of what you want to do. Do you think that um, in having that time crunch, how did that help yeah. you out? Or once, once you find the idea and what you're actually passionate about, what you're interested in, because you are writing about yourself, you want to highlight who you are, even though it's only like 600 words, it kind of sucks that it's that low. Uh, you were writing by yourself, not about some like random essay for like an English class. So it's, it's a lot easier to write about. I know that once I found, once I thought about the story from the fig tree and I like brainstormed it, I, it was two weeks before the November 1st deadline. I wrote the essay, I fully edited it and everything. And I wrote my supplements in that two weeks and didn't really stress that much because it, it went by pretty quickly. So once I found like what I wanted to do and what I actually really liked as an idea, it, it like once the ball started rolling, just kept on rolling and I got everything done pretty quickly. Amazing. So expounding on what you discussed about the fig tree, I fell in love with that paragraph, how it was imported from Greece, now has its own thriving ecosystem and the fact that you're going to take from it to go something yourself. That is such a unique and interesting parallel to your own family story, um, which I fell in love with. So how did you decide to incorporate that into your essay? Did your family plant the original uh, tree itself? Yeah, so once I thought of the story of the fig tree, I kind of realized, like, wow, this is some great metaphors. Because I didn't originally think of the symbolism behind it, but it's a fig tree from Greece. And yes, my family did plant it. They imported the seed or they brought it with them. And that fig tree has grown there since. And having the idea of, like, I just thought I probably planted this fig tree, but having, you know, a piece of this fig tree that was from Greece planted now in my backyard so it could have a new opportunity to grow, it kind of, like, relates to the whole immigrant story and stuff. And I, I saw that after... I thought of the idea. So that's what I was saying about before about keeping an open mind, how you know you can make symbolism or any story that could highlight something about you from really anything. You already kind of touched on this about procrastination, but did you come across any other major challenges while you were drafting your essay? I guess inspiration. I know a lot of people have like a major story in their life that they, they know they're gonna write about for their essay, some like familial event or like this person has really inter like influences them or uh, maybe an internship or something that like changed their life. I didn't have anything like that. So I was kind of lost on where to start. And that's why I was writing down a bunch of like random stories, but none of them felt like significant enough for like an essay. Cause I knew this was like, you know, major to get into college. So I felt like nothing really lived up to what it needed to be. But um, I think that it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be some amazing story that like changed your life. This is just me planting a fig tree. So eventually when I got to, when I finally saw that, how this event of me planting the tree was actually so could be used like for all the symbolism could be to show who I am and what I want to do with my life. I started writing my essay and I really liked it. So I guess the biggest challenge was trying to find that story and try to make it feel important. You talked about your parents and grandparents and all the sacrifices they made to settle your family here in the U.S. I think a lot of children of immigrants can relate to the sentiment of thankfulness and also that need to give back. Could you talk more about this motivation to succeed and serve others? Yeah. So I know that, I mean, like we, we take it for granted, or at least some people do. I know I, I used to do of what our parents or grandparents did for us as being immigrants. But it's, it's actually crazy if you think about how they sacrificed their life just so we could have a better life. Someone that they don't, might not even know because they sacrificed it before they had a family. Like my grandpa today, like he could have done so many things with his life, maybe like enjoyed a lot more moments, but he spent day and night working so then his children his future grandchildren he doesn't even know or might not even have could have a better life and that's just that's just an amazing thing to do and you can't just 
uh, for me personally, I think I just can't leave that there and not do anything significant in terms of like helping other people because like I've been given this amazing opportunity due to my parents and my grandparents' sacrifice that I should share that with others. I mean, I mean personally, I think you only live once and you have to seize that moment to at least enjoy your life. And for me, something to make me happy would be would see others happy, and make other people's lives better. Definitely. I know you have a lot of Greek pride. I do. You founded Greek Fawn, um, and you never fail to impress with your wealth of historical knowledge. I've seen you in the library with your Greek history books. <laughs> um, so how has your connection with your family built your patriotism, and how has your patriotism, uh, patriotism built you as a person? Well, with my family being immigrants, they have a very like strong connection back to their homeland. It's not, even though I'm second generation, uh, both my parents are still very connected. Even though they were born here, they're both very connected with Greece. We go back every summer, and it's a big part of my persona like personality and who I am because I just really like my culture, and I really have embraced it as a, uh, even though I'm not from Greece, I still call Greece my home. I knew being Greek, like as, as Jasmine said, it's a very uh, big part of my personality and who I am. And I want to include that in the essay because, again, you're writing about like who you are as a person and what you want to show to the, col uh, to the colleges you're applying to. So... I included it through the fact that even though it's like subtle and it could be from anywhere, I wrote Sikya, which originally had in Greek characters, but I had to change to English characters because the common app website did not accept it, but it's still the Greek writing. And I thought that was like a little way to show uh, my, a bit of my culture. Last but not least, before we end off, what advice would you give to students currently considering what to write about for their college essays? Yeah, so I think I've been touching on this uh, throughout this entire interview, but start early again when you start I don't, like jasmine said i don't condone procrastinating but once you find what you're writing about it becomes a lot easier once you really like what topic you're choosing but start early so you have a lot of time get help you should not be the only person reading your essay you have to you want to highlight who you are as a person but you only have 600 words so try to find like a singular aspect or a few aspects about yourself that, w that would really stand out to colleges and that you want them to know so i like i did i wrote down like a list about uh things I, about myself that i think are very important for colleges to know and then i chose stories you could do this in either order whatever you're more comfortable with about you know finding a story that like really embrace a story that really shows who you are or if like me you didn't have one you'd be keep an open mind because like anything could become a story like planting a fig tree even though it's kind of insignificant that's that's the whole idea of my essay so yeah get help from others have your teachers parents friends read your essays and uh, keep an open mind to any new ideas focus on yourself and focus on something that isn't already part of your common app application because your essay is a space where you could write about yourself and it's already kind of shown in like the the yeah, activity section and your grades and stuff then you then, you know the, the colleges aren't learning something new about yourself so you, you have the space of 650 words to show something new to them show who you are as a person or one aspect of yourself and make them fall in love with you amazing thank you so much to Anisi, and thank you to all our listeners tuning in we hope this episode was informative for those starting to think about their college essays and an enjoyable listen for everyone that ends today's episode on how planting a fig tree got Dionisi into his dream school. Thank you. You can find previous and future episodes of Admitted on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and recently now on our YouTube channel, The Classic TV. You can check out The Classic out on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and on TikTok at THS Classic. That's all for today. Until next time. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>